modify it in accordance with state statute. Uh, our law specifies the criteria to be evaluated when considering whether a Tier 4 designation is warranted. Uh, the board is in receipt of a draft report prepared by staff with an evaluation of each of the criteria referenced in the statute. Uh, the City of West Haven has also submitted information for consideration by the board in this discussion. I will now open this matter up for discussion by the Municipal Accountability Review Board as expanded. Anyone care to speak on the question of the criteria related to Tier 4 designation and the draft report thereon? Mr. Waxenberg. Uh, I think the draft, uh, there's a series of uh, documents, the most important of which is the findings and recommendations. But I want to commend the, the staff uh, for uh, such a thorough uh, analysis, if you will, of, of the findings and the recommendations, the draft recommendations for us to consider. I think they're uh, all inclusive related to the issues that we are to discuss. They are. Uh, they highlight the areas that are of concern over the years that we sat as a as a as a board, and uh, I can't think of any amendments that would be necessary to to modify or adjust uh, this draft uh, based on its uh, completeness and uh, due diligence of its work. So regardless of the outcome of whatever the vote may or may not be regarding Tier 4 designation, I think that um, it's, uh, it's a well-crafted document. And traditionally, in, in documents of this nature, uh, what happens is uh, they automatically go to the left uh, a paragraph to say what uh, you know. What's the recommendation, and what are the uh, what are we looking at? And and I think the most important sentence in this document is on page 13, the first sentence on the recommendations outside of the of the of the tier four recommendation. So it says, Amar notes that historically there have been systemic deficiencies that have prevented the city from achieving long-term financial stability. I think that's crucial. I think that when we sat down 13, 13, seems like 13 years ago, three years ago, uh, four years ago to start this, we noticed and stated the, the systemic vulnerabilities and difficulties. And this is nothing new uh, with this administration or whoever. Uh, unfortunately, we are forced because of an audit that has found continued systemic and cultural uh, failures. And uh, again, without getting into the debate, I, I, I just want to commend the staff for its completeness uh, regarding this, this uh, very difficult task. Thank you, Mr. Wackenberg. I'm glad you drew my attention to that recommendation section. I do want to note there is a typo in the draft, which we will correct. Um, as the recommendation does say that based on the findings listed above, uh, several pages of findings, uh, the MARB recommends the city of West Haven be designated a Tier 4 municipality. The next sentence is the MARB recognizes that a Tier 4 designation, it should say, will not guarantee that systemic and cultural change is achieved. We recognize that. There are limits to the additional authority provided by a Tier 4 designation. However, it does provide us with additional oversight tools, notably the ability to hire a financial manager. With good faith cooperation from the city's leadership, the oversight we will be uh, undertaking will help the city implement the cultural changes in financial infrastructure development that previous oversight boards have been unable to enforce. Other questions, comment? Mr. White has his hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, I, I, I agree uh, with the thoroughness of the, uh, the, the findings 
Uh, I'll just uh, weigh in briefly that I do think it's a matter of culture. There's a lot of very good cor uh, corrective actions, but um, you know, quite frankly, without the willingness uh, to continue, uh, which I find lacking, uh, I, I don't think that uh, we will have done our job. Um, uh, I have two questions um, uh, for the city. Number one, I did look, look through the city submission, and I think it's helpful, uh, but I would like to know uh, why the city is submitting it uh, at, at this, in the context of this discussion. And secondly, whether there are any findings, proposed findings, uh, that the city disagrees with. Thank you. Um, may I speak on that? Certainly. Thank you very much. Um, why we did, why um, I did and my staff did the submission is because what I, what was being said was that we hadn't complied with basically anything, and that to me is incorrect. So I went through everything and I spent um, several days and put together what we have done over the past few months, whether it be a corrective for action plan, for um, IT, uh, procurement. We have hired staff. Uh, we continue to um, work with my, for my loan on a consistent basis, who has been a real asset to us. And so I didn't want it to become, especially with a new secretary that um, doesn't know the same history because I've been on it since day one and I just wanted to make sure that I put everything in an order that was easy to follow and together rather than just hoping that everybody still has the, um, the documents. As far as the findings in the audit, we are still going through those and pushing back on those so along with the submission of um, or lack thereof of paperwork for CARES Act. I know Scott Jackson is on the call. He has been working with staff as have I, um, and we have made um, some head raises all of that um, because we still have time. Um, I think we were allowed to make additional conditions. I don't know, I guess somebody's not on mute. Excuse me, if you're not speaking, please put your microphone on mute. Thank you. Mayor Austin. Thank you, Secretary. I appreciate that. Um, so we are we are moving forward with that as well because, as everyone knows, that has looked at an audit. Um, there are you know you are allowed to look at the findings, and if you have any issues with the findings, you are allowed to propose back you know why and and you know look for more information, so to speak. So um, we are still in that process, and as I said, the CARES Act funding, um, we also were um, getting the format. I know one of the things was that one of the formats was incorrect with reconciling the payroll register uh, with the flat finance director, and I know that we are working diligently on that. Uh, Mr. Secretary, my, uh, my question went to the proposed tier pot for findings, not the code resident, just to be clear. Thank you, Mr. If the mayor has a response, that would be good. Um, for the tier four findings, now I know about the corrective action plan that I have, we have filled um, uh, some of that out as well. Again, we have hired staff, the procurement director, we have an admin there. I know there's supposed to be a buyer. Um, we also have the two accounts payable positions that are listed in there um, already filled. Um, we do have an internal auditor on staff and have had an internal auditor on for several years. And um, so for my recollection, we, we are trying to address all of that. So we did put in the information that we did have. Mr. Hamilton. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Secretary. Uh, I, I want to uh, echo uh, comments of uh, my fellow board member, uh, Mr. Waxenberg. Uh, I think uh, this report lays out a very strong and compelling case uh, it is extremely thorough, uh, and I think the conclusion uh, that uh, uh, the MARV needs to move West Haven to Tier 4 is uh, strongly supported by, uh, by this report and by this recommendation. Uh, the only thing I want to add is that uh, really to just put a uh, finer point on the uh, long-term nature of West Haven's problems. West Haven really has had financial problems uh, that go back decades. 
you know, we're, we're projecting a $2.2 million surplus, and that's without farm funds, CARES Act funds, or any other funds. And unfortunately, part of that surplus is going to mean that we're going to have to cover, uh, you know, some of that, that funding that was stolen or, you know, not documented into the audit. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk more, I'm, I'm sure, about the legality of going into Tier 4. Uh, but I also will say, even though I don't support Tier 4, I do support one of the items in the $3 million budget that you put forward if we were to be put into Tier 4, and that would be a financial consultant who would uh, document internal controls and verify the segregation of duties throughout the city. Uh, because I think that's a key point. Um, out of everything that I, I read in the document, that to me, uh, and again, you know, I'm a, a ceremonial treasurer, I don't work in the building, but I think it's important that we immediately, uh, you know, fix our internal control problems and make sure there's segregation of duties uh, throughout the city to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And, you know, my other concern with the Tier 4, and it doesn't have anything to do with the procedural aspect, but, you know, we require a, a more than one mil increase to our taxpayers. And, uh, you know, as an elected official, I've got to protect the taxpayers. That's part of my job. And, uh, you know, we know this is a bureaucratic system, and we have all these consultants in that $3 million budget, and these, these consultants are going to come up with recommendations, and those recommendations are going to cost money. So uh, I think that one plus mil increase to our our uh, taxpayers would certainly get larger and more bureaucratic. And, and uh, you know, I, I just don't see that I want to go down that that hole. Um, but again, uh, I don't have a vote, unfortunately. Uh, my position is ceremonial, and uh, I respectfully allow a uh, if you would allow me. A ceremonial vote. Uh, I would certainly ceremonially vote no. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Last. I don't believe we have any provision under the law for a ceremonial vote here. Uh, I'll also note that cities, municipalities, do not have due process rights under the Constitution. They are creatures of the state, political subdivisions of the state, and we expect them to uh, manage their affairs in a way that is um, honors the public trust. Um, as far as the balance sheet being stronger, it's stronger because the state has infused funds into the municipality. Um, so some of your points are not well taken. I will move on to Mr. Luciano. Thank you, Chairperson. I appreciate that. Um, I wasn't planning to speak, but Michael Lass' comments uh, kind of compelled me to do so. There's an old adage that uh, says, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool, fool me twice, shame on me. Um, we've been fooled many, many times over the years. And um, when he mentioned the, the state rep stealing the money, it breaks my heart that he did so. But had the city followed our recommendations, it would not have been possible for him to have done so. Then therefore, uh, with a heavy heart, I don't see any other options for us except to go to Tier 4. All right, um, Mr. Brockman. Uh, I'll be very brief to tell um, South Conference same place I was. I was not planning on being on this item at all. I um, was to that book, but uh, I don't think anybody wants from this board wants us to be going to Tier 4. It's a question of um, It is a question of, uh, we feel we don't have any other choice after looking at an audit. So that's an audit finds that yes, I gather are still being reviewed and discussed and some parts of it may be disputed, but $800,000 in financing that was not part of the criminal investigation of stolen money is being unable to be rec uh, reconciled and properly documented uh, and an audit that was going on for an extended period of time it is problematic and that this is the tool that we have and it may be an imprecise tool I think it's part of what the uh, next phase of the discussion is but I think it's um, it's the step going to tier four is the step that we have to take to protect the taxpayers of what and to help the city uh, get it. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. 
Secretary, and I too am prompted to address some of the points raised by Treasurer Last. Um, I take the same exception that Secretary Beckham has raised about um, the chances that the city has been given uh, to address these uh, fundamental weaknesses in its uh, financial structure. And, and Treasurer Last, you mentioned the number of times that you are a ceremonial treasurer, that you're not on the premises of City Hall. But you do have the bully pulpit of your position. You are vested with the authority as treasurer. And in fact, if uh, memory serves, one of the observations by Colm Resnick is that your signature plate was used in a manner that was inconsistent with any uh, reconciliation or confirmation of the underlying uh, payments, whether they were pro appropriately payable by the city. There is, there have been numerous occasions to, to Mr. Um, to, to the points made by all of uh, the MARB members, MARB has to take more action because the actions we've taken have not been heated. Uh, and uh, we have an obligation to the residents of the city of West Haven to, to step in and exercise as much authority as the law gives us. Um, it is extraordinarily uh, disheartening to hear that there are efforts to, well, we'll, we'll get the information, we have the information, and there were just numerous opportunities to, to cooperate, which were not, uh, which the city did not, did not respond to. So, um, you do have power as treasurer, whether you describe yourself as ceremony or not, and I would hope that you will be a part of the solution that the city fashions in response to any decision made by tomorrow today. Um, but, the justification for Tier 4 status, I think, is abundantly clear, um, very clearly laid out uh, for anyone to see. I, I want to join um, the remarks in commending the staff uh, for preparing what I think is the first real synopsis of the history of Mars mm. engagement with the city of West Haven. Um, and it's something that um, I think we were obligated to share with the city to, to let them know this, this series of events that have prompted this uh, extraordinary intervention. Um, and, I, and I'm hopeful for the participation and cooperation of all of the city officials as we move forward to, to instill some sense of confidence that the city, the city's residents so, so richly deserve. Mr. Falsigno. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I also, uh, this is the uh, kind of the, uh, Take my comments on the head of Mr. Last. I'm not sure you attend to any of the more meetings with you, Daniel. But the majority of the issues that have been presented and the majority of the problems of which they have had has all been explained by the march to them ad nauseum over the last three years. Whether it fell on deaf ears or they weren't capable or they weren't didn't have the ability to perform. I'm not exactly sure what the reasons were, but, but a lot of the issues that West Haven has had could have very easily been corrected and mitigated if, if the people in charge had taken taken a bull by the horns and utilized the advice from Mark and and take care of their playable and their receivable problems. These were very, very basic issues. There were other towns in the area that could have given you advice. That was suggested. There was numerous times people have brought to um, the group's attention that there were financial issues. I remember making a few comments about where the money and here we go. The other thing that I think is very, very important is the snapshot of Colin Resnick is only a $1.1 million snapshot of the finances of the city of West Haven. And what I think Tier 4 is going to help us do is take a look at the rest. And I think that's very, very important for the the, um, the people of West Haven. On a million dollars, we found, uh, or they found some residents who found some with um, some issues. And I think going forward, I think the other the aspect of the city's finances that you can be looked at. So when you make a so comment so about your balance, uh, I think it's not a very good thing. I want to know that without uh, people who have stayed connected in Connecticut, supporting the town of the city of West Haven over the last few years, I'm not sure your balance is looking for change. Mr. Galignano. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. 
Well, I, I am here to support the city of West Haven here. I, I will follow the comments of Mr. Uh, last because I do not believe that we need to be in tier four. I also believe that we don't meet the criteria of the, of the uh, tier four. I also believe that the mayor has worked truly hard over the last five years to get this city back on its feet. Again, our balance sheets show that we are in that right direction. Maybe we haven't done everything that uh, we needed to do yet. Um, it just takes time and time for us to get to that level. Um, and we haven't touched it. We haven't used any of our money. And I believe in the last two years, as Mr. Last has said, uh, I, I know it's been a struggle for West Haven, but I am with with Michael on this because listen, we do not want to uh, at least get another mill rate at this point. I know the city, the, the, the residents that I uh, represent do not want a, a mill rate increase and, and it is going to be a lot larger than that one mill rate that we think it's going to be. Uh, most of it, and I will, I can speak for the rest of the council on this, is that we do not want that either. And I get that we haven't done everything that you guys have asked us to do, but we will get to that level. We And, and that is the... I know we will, but it's been a struggle. Uh, he, that is a long time, that's 30 years plus. That is a long time for a culture to, to be bad. And I understand it's been bad. I've been on this council for quite a while. Uh, and, and this is my third administration. And this is the best administration that I've been on in, out of the three and it's the only one that's shown balanced budgets since I've been on, in, in, on this council. Uh, I believe that tier four is not where we need to be. That is not where I'm going to, uh, I will not support that. Uh, I will, all my full support is with, with Mayor Rossi on this and, and the city of West David's residents. Uh, we do not need uh, come in and start raising our bill rates. I think that's really what's going to happen and that's really, I believe that's really going to hurt us more and I, I understand that we need better controls there and I believe Mayor Rossi is in that direction on this. So I believe our first, most priority was getting our, our uh, unbalance in order. We did listen and we did have a state rep who was well trusted in our community and we would have never thought somebody would have what I would call stab us in the bag and twist the knife as he's pulling it back out on us. That was absolutely horrible on that. Uh, but, and I get that that should have been found quicker than it was. Uh, that's why uh, the thieves are good at what they're doing. When they want to steal, they find a way and then you have to find a control to fix that. I think that's we're in the right direction for that. Um, and once again, I just, uh, I, I feel tier four is the wrong place for the city of West Haven. I know we're on the right track. It's been a long, hard track. It's a 30 year process of that this city has been in, in the wrong way. And, uh, and I do really believe Mayor Rossi is on the right track and the city council supports her and where we're headed this way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Kennison, you've got your hand up. Thank you, Secretary, if I may. Um, two com uh, three comments, actually. One comment is that, first, um, we would fall short if we did not recognize uh, the great work that came from this board in compiling this report. It was not just by the staff, it was everybody here, including um, every single member provided feedback. So this is a compilation from everyone. and. Um, so we did do uh, a great deal of work, and I do need to give a lot of credit to Julian, who, who has uh, did, a, did a great job pulling together everybody's responses. So we, I would be wrong if we did not give him that credit. Secondly, um, Treasurer Last, I would like to comment about the budget side of it as, um, as well. I'm going I'm to stop you I'm, there. Um, I think the okay. board members have had their way uh, okay. on that topic. We're going to move on, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, 
So we need to move on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, is there further discussion on the criteria, on the findings, and the draft recommendations? Mr. Galignano. Um, this is David Grudberg. I would like a brief chance to be heard if, uh, if possible. At the moment, we are having a discussion among the board, the expanded board, which includes Mr. Galignano, who has his hand up, I believe. I apologize. I had to knock my hand down. Okay. I apologize. Any members, That's the the board, moment, thank you. any members of the board have uh, Mr. Falsigno? Oh, yeah, I have my hand raised. I apologize. Okay. So that was review, uh, discussion, evaluation, the Secretary criteria. You. Secretary, it's Nancy Rossi. Nice to meet you. Mayor, please. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I do want to to um, backtrack a little bit on some of the things that have been said, and one of which was the funding. Um, when I first got in, for those who you know don't remember, I certainly do. Um, it was a different um, different secretary at the time. It was Secretary Benjamin Bonds at that point in time, and a different governor. When I first got in, um, we were put into MARB immediately um, because of the deficit bonding being triggered by the past administration right before Thanksgiving. We were diligently, we tried very, very hard to move forward. One of the hindrances was that not only was the deficit bonding package brought forward, but there was also a deficit in FY17 that unfortunately was not included in that package, and an $8 million hole in FY18. So as you can see, we had a lot of challenges right off the get-go. Um, at that point in time, Secretary Barnes, um, once the audit was released and the findings were true about 17 having almost a $2 million deficit that was not part of the package, um, he instructed me and the rest of the city to make the necessary cuts so that we could take $2 million off of that $8 million and put it for 17 to get rid of that deficit. So now we have $6 million for an $8 million hole. We have done our best. I agree um, with um, both of my colleagues, Treasurer Last and Council Galliano. Um, if everything was broken, and when I say everything was broken, it was everything was broken, and we did look at the financial end first, and we worked very hard on that, and I know that we have made major strides on that, to the point where we did not take a dollar of more refunding on FY21, nor were we planning on taking it in FY22, along with the fact that in um, most of the years, I won't say all, we were not given what was outlined in our five-year plan because we did better than was expected. But I, will, I do want to acknowledge and thank this board for the funding and the guidance we have received so far. Even though I know that everyone's saying we're not listening to it, we, we really do listen to it. It's been difficult a lot of times. As you know, we have um, faced some challenges in the past, one of which, again, when I got in, I had a one person that was doing procurement half of the time along with risk management the other half of the time. So we have corrected um, that. Um, we have a procurement department now and we are trying to move forward. So I just wanted to, to, to just be clear and I also will say, and I don't know when we're officially going to do the vote at what time during this meeting, but I will not be supporting um, going into tier four as well. And I understand I'll be on the short end of the six, but I know how to count votes and I get that. But I have to um, do what I believe is right and what's right for what's paid. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if there are no other uh, comments from the board, we can move to item C. Uh, I believe it's 2C on your special meeting agenda. Uh, consideration of a finding that the fiscal condition of the city of West Haven warrants designation as a tier four municipality under our statutes. This item was included on the agenda at the direction of the MARB at their special meeting held on April 5th. I just want to let the members know that if the board votes to make a finding that a tier four designation is warranted, that finding and the recommendations uh, that we just discussed, we will, um, we will clean them up and fix the typo and the other uh, items. Uh, those will be forwarded to the Secretary of OPM, that's me. Uh, we will then have to have under our law a 30-day public comment period, which will take us uh, into May, uh, probably the 13th, Friday the 13th looks like, one, two, three, four weeks from now, 30 days, 
Then at the end of the 30-day comment period, the finding and recommendation, as well as the report regarding the comments received during the public comment period, will be forwarded to the governor. It is the governor's decision to designate the municipality as a Tier 4 municipality under that statute. So, with that, I will seek a motion to adopt the findings and recommendations of the Municipal Accountability Review Board regarding a Tier 4 designation for the City of West Haven as amended and to recommend that the Tier 4 designation of the City of West Haven pursuant to uh, Connecticut General Statute Section 7-576E. I have a motion from Ms. Shaw. I have a motion from Ms. Any if you're not speaking, He's calling any discussion on the motion? I see no hands for discussion. Uh, Mr. Egan. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say that I would support the motion um, for not necessarily the uh, the issue of the theft of or the alleged theft of uh, Representative DeMassa, but for all the points and all the reasons uh, that is laid out in the uh, draft report that is before us to recommend to the secretary that is so, I think, well documented and supportive of the statutory criteria for a move to Tier 4. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Other comments? Uh, Mr. Secretary, this is David Grubberg again representing the city. Is this uh, an appropriate time for non-board members to speak? No, sir. It is not. The city is represented on the board by Mayor Rossi, Mr. Galliano, and Mr. Last at this point. If they have anything to offer, they may. I'll simply say for myself, um, the uh, the recommendations speak for themselves there. There's quite a bit of detail that the staff laid out there. It's clear that the, this latest episode that Cone Resnick documented points to serious governance issues and serious uh, finance, lack of financial controls and other weaknesses. Um, I'm hopeful we can get to a positive result for the city and its taxpayers and for the state taxpayers as well uh, in fairly short order. And I'll be committing the resources of my agency to that effort uh, at the direction of the board. I intend to vote aye on the motion. Other, Ms. Shaw. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. And, and I would just underscore that in supporting a move toward Tier 4 designation, this is an expression of Mar being on the side of the city. This is not whether this is something against the city. We earnestly want the city to stand on its own two feet, to be independent, to manage its own affairs. MARB is not in the business of oversight, perpetual oversight. And, and so for our part, for my part, uh, for and I, and I think other members of the MARB feel the same way, we want to work with the city to get to a place where there can be assurance that its resources are being handled appropriately. So this is not an adversarial. I know it, it was couched in those terms. But we are stepping up our support and intervention and oversight because we want to get to this, this we want the city to get to a good place. So I, I we are really in alignment here. I and I would hope that the city officials, even if you vote against your for designation, that will continue to have the full cooperation of the city as we move to to that to that better place. All right, we've got a motion made by Ms. Shaw, seconded by Mr. Miller. Any further discussion? I'll call for a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say by signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying no. No. Ms. Mayor Rossi votes no, I see. Okay, I voted no, thank you. <laughs> all right. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. The motion carries. That brings us to our final item. Um, as I indicated, it will take a 30-day comment period before we can present to the governor and, uh, his ultimate designation, um, his, his decision on designation. However, uh, so as not to lose 30 days time, I ask the staff to include this item uh, regarding recommendations from the board 
for the staff to begin work on corrective actions. Um, the staff will review several items in preparation of the possibility that Tier 4 is approved by the governor. Uh, we provided you with a draft budget to implement Tier 4 to cover the cost, administrative costs of that, uh, to recover expenses uh, uh, expended to date in terms of the forensic audit. Uh, there's an action plan timeline that was provided to the board and a draft corrective, corrective action plan previously reviewed by the board. Um, I don't know that we need to take a vote on any of those items. I think the corrective action plan is a, uh, an organic document that will continue to evolve uh, as a direction of the board. We don't necessarily have to call it a draft anymore. It's been provided to the public, so it is a it is our active working corrective action plan. Um, I would like uh, from the board if, uh, to get the ball rolling on staff work. A motion to uh, request that the staff draft a memorandum of under of agreement regarding use of withheld municipal restructuring fund dollars for the purpose of supporting the proposed budget as you have in your packet. So moved. Mr. Waxenberg moves and second. Mr. I can't see who that was. Mr. Egan seconding. Any discussion on having the staff draft a uh, memorandum of agreement with the city regarding municipal restructuring funds for purposes of supporting the proposed budget? Any discussion of that? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, aye. please say no. We still get to, do we get to vote on that? Yes. I'm saying, I'm saying no. <laughs> I don't know about Council Gavin now. Let me ask, I, I take that back. Julian, I believe that they got a vote on the designation, but not on actions subsequent to that. Is that correct? That is correct for the, <laughs> okay. This is for the regular board members, okay. uh, the non West Haven board members. Correct. So, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. no. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. So we will begin that work. I think I need another motion just to cover ourselves to request that the staff begin to identify consultants with appropriate experience and expertise to con conduct a financial organizational assessment. So moved by. Second. Aye. Someone. Moved by Egan, seconded by. Luciano. All those in favor, please think about by saying aye. 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 We have a question for Ms. Shaw. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Certainly. So uh, I'm just, I, I know that uh, this, this day they craft those examinations, a roster of consultants who may be appropriate for this purpose. Um, I'm not sure if, if in fact we need to go through an RFQ process. That can be an expedited process, but I'm just curious to know from this, this, this search process can run concurrent with a 30-day notice provision, correct? I think and, and so. Excuse. Yes, that's what we're planning to do. Because there's no, right, there's no guarantee we're not going to execute a contract or anything. We're going to look for a vote. We're going to make a recommendation back to the board. It's, it's my intention that the board will approve us every step of the way. I'll be taking no unilateral action. I've said that before. I'll say it again. We're going to act on behalf of the board's wishes. So we will bring any information from that uh, identification of consultants back to the board for your approval. Mr. White. Mr. White. Well, I, I, just a comment. I was uh, sort of surprised at uh, Mayor Rossi's um, comment, even if she was not allowed to vote. Uh, the, the, the money here for corrective action is coming out of existing MARC funds and not out of the West Haven budget and their taxpayers. And one of the reasons was, which I do not agree with, is that, um, you know, the bar, if you do this, is going to raise the mill rate. Um, you know, the city has not taken steps to develop efficiencies as we have recommended so they could reduce the um, mill rate. So it's just an observation. We don't have to have a uh, discussion, but uh, you know, subject to the government, the governor's approval, um, you know, they're in tier four, and you know, I think this motion was to help the city without uh, draining their funds. So I. Uh, Mr. Brockman, uh, thank you. The two 
Well, we're talking about the consultant piece. I was wondering if it's part of that work. Um, we could also look at what are we expecting, if two is already made, it's the nature. Um, what do we expect the financial manager to be sort of their responsibility so that we can all, uh, both from the moral perspective and from the city's perspective, have a sense going into this? What well, we're expecting that consultant to be uh, their, their work. Um, I think that is one thing that I know the board has talked about is the, what is their authority, what is their day to day. Um, I do have a question on the corrective actions, the work in progress corrective actions, I'll call it. Um, but we finish the item and then I'll put it back. Let's finish this item. Yes, yeah, so it would be my intention that any scope of work for anyone that uh, we're going to engage, first of all, the engagement would be subject to your approval and scope of work we would review with you extensively before. Absolutely. Any other discussion on the motion to have the staff identify consultants with appropriate experience and expertise to help us do the financial organizational assessment? Any further discussion? Mr. White, you have your hand up. If there's no further discussion, I'll call that vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please indicate by saying no. Any abstentions? The ayes have that motion carries. Further discussion on the corrective action plan, Mr. Brockman? Yes, I was wondering, I know that there are, we have not, I, you know, we're going to a 30-day period, and obviously the city has a uh, draft the audit and the corrective action plan, and I'm wondering if in advance our next meeting the city is amenable to this, or if we're going to require that, I don't know, but hopefully the city is amenable to this, is, um, I would like, I'm curious for their thoughts as to those initial items on the corrective action plan. I know some of the items are things that the city is already moving on, Sort of what is the status of the ones that have been moved on? What are your responses to those items? I, um, I feel like I don't want to wait for the public comment period of the governor's designation to begin moving. I feel like we can move on some of those things. I know the city wants to move on some of those things um, before we get to uh, May 14th. So, or whatever that date we pick it. So, I'm hoping that we could start that um, next. Fair enough. Yeah, and I guess that we've already started that. As soon as the paperwork was sent to us, first off, some of the stuff we already had in process, we had moved forward with some other stuff. So no, we didn't wait for like this meeting, because to me, it didn't matter about the meeting. Obviously, I didn't want to go into chair four. However, the work that you're asking to be done was very reasonable, and I didn't see any reason to wait on starting to work on it. So no. We, we dive right in, and some of the things we've already, we did already have in place, as I said, and, and, um, but we will continue to um, work with that. Um, as I said, the one thing that I was happy that Mr. Hamilton cleared up at the last meeting was the fact that, um, you know, the checks all have to be signed by hand. That, that, was, that was worrisome, and we're going to work something out with that. But I uh, know we started right away as soon as that came through. So is it possible for you to add a, do a memo or something that we could, that the board would have, in, you know, a two-week update or something? That way it's not a, a month long, that way there's a sense of what, what are those responses? Absolutely. I think that that's a very reasonable request as well. Um, a lot of it was staffing that we had already taken care of or we're in the process of taking care of. So again, um, I think it's all important work and absolutely we can make sure that you get, rather than waiting, I agree with you, the 30 days. And if there's anything that, you know, the bar wants to prioritize that if you let me know too, we can prioritize. Great. Thank you. Can I ask the uh, staff, before we get too further along, uh, to recite uh, how the public comment period will work? We, we will be taking public comment uh, via mail and email, as I understand it. Is Julian on? Yes. Yes. Julian. yes. So the, the plan would be to, to post the official notice on the MARP website and provide you know, some background information and instructions for how to submit written comment by service mail and email and um, then that will first over here for 30 days and uh, if, if, the, if the board and the city feel it's appropriate it might also be helpful to have a link uh, that the city puts on its website uh, that would take readers to the um, to the MARM page that has that, that notice on the, the information. Okay. 
Uh, staff will work with the city then on that uh, uh, piece. I note that the MAR, there's a link to the MAR uh, page on our OPM landing page. If you go to dt.gov, get to the OPM. MARB is right there on our first page to link to. So uh, there will be an ability, and there will be information about how the public comment period will go and how public comment will be solicited. Um, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, yes, thank you, Secretary Benham. Uh, uh, in sort of line with trying to uh, um, provide some uh, insight that uh, perhaps West Haven and uh, Mark can uh, use going forward, one of the things I noticed, I, I think uh, our corrective action plan does uh, you know, talk about the accounts payable function and the uh, hiring of a uh, experienced and qualified account payable manager and creation of uh, um, policies and procedures uh, relative to accounts payable. But I do think when I looked at the what West Haven had submitted in terms of the work uh, that they've been doing, there was a lot of focus on the purchase and requisition side, which is certainly extremely important, but I really didn't see much there relative to the accounts payable side and specifically thinking of the uh, findings in the Cone Resnick audit. Uh, there are a lot of items I don't uh, think he's going to let the ineligible in because of the mm -hmm. lack of adequate documentation. So I think one of the things Can you hear? Uh, that Les David needs to do Smart. is he needs to have very clear standards he's been relative to what constitutes a
Wow. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, it looks like, just to uh, make sure we've got the 30 days behind us when next we meet, this it looks like the week of May 16th is uh, an opportune week for us to be able to consider uh, further actions here. The afternoons of the 18th and 19th look clear to me at the moment. Uh, if those are something that folks, if you have your calendars handy, do people have a preference in that week, those days? Um, Mr. Secretary, can we um, come back to that and have uh, the staff uh, actually the going to be okay. a hoop man. Thank you. That works for me. We will withhold um, our votes. Any other business today? From the board. I have one um, question. They asked about priority, and um, one item that I see as urgent priority is um, making sure that uh, the control is put in place immediately regarding the proper process for dual signature approval and that review. All right. Mr. Egan. Yes, Mr. Secretary, um, I would like to ask going forward, certainly at uh, you know, the convenience of, of your office, uh, that we could start, unless there's something that prohibits it, having the uh, subcommittee meetings back in West Haven. I think that would be uh, um, good under the purpose of why we originally had them there, which was to uh, for convenience too, especially for the public to be able to come and attend. I don't know if there's a part of the meeting, so um, I'll bring it back to you. with the state, if there was anything that prohibits that under any of the current executive orders, but if that could be taken into consideration, I think it would be positive for not only the subcommittee, but for the uh, leadership and the uh, public of the city. I give you a chicken wing, Paul. I'm glad you mentioned that. I you want to explore that. with the staff that possibility as well as the possibility that we um, get together in person as a board for our next meeting, um, probably at the Capitol Complex somewhere. We will explore that possibility with the staff. Any other questions, comments? Uh, all of our work having been uh, completed this morning. Now we're into the afternoon. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this special meeting of the Municipal Accountability Review Board. So moved. Mr. White moved. Mr. Wackenberg second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed to saying no. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will let you know when we will meet again. So the question is going to be whether you seek an injunction before the governor signs whether you can do it immediately thereafter. Well, I think we have to I wait. I don't think they, I don't think, well, I think, I think they I have think no clue that we, that's even a possibility. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, let's see if they actually respond to it. Uh, I think we have to wait for Michael's response from the staff before we make. What, 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 what's the criteria that yes. applies to this? 